In this video, I'm gonna continue teaching you about multiple sclerosis clinical research. Specifically, I'm going to explain the concept of blinding. Don't turn away because that starts right now. Howdy, thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I'm the founder of the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis, where we care for families impacted by MS from around the globe. And I'm in the process of making a series of YouTube videos, helping people better understand MS clinical trials. If you haven't seen the other videos, I'll be sure to post a link up above so you can check out that playlist and get caught up. In this video, I wanted to specifically address the concept of blinding and why we do it and why it's so darn important in MS clinical research. When you do a clinical trial where you're giving a group of people with MS either drug A or drug B, and you're trying to compare those two drugs, we give the patients those medications without telling them which one they're on. So they're taking a pill, let's say, and it could be drug A or it could be drug B, but they're not told. Moreover, the doctor who is evaluating the patient and taking care of them in the context of the trial he doesn't know either. So he doesn't know which pill they're on. Now, why is that? Because if the patient knew the allocation, if they knew they were on study drug, or if they knew that they were on the active comparator, it would bias their behavior. They may think that the study drug is supposed to be better. And if they knew they were on the study drug, it literally might change how they report their symptoms. It may change a lot of things about their behavior, which would influence the trial. Similarly, if the doctor knew the allocation, said, oh, this patient's on drug X, I expect this or I expect that, it could influence how he or she evaluates the patient. Quite literally, it would bias the trial in a way that would make the results not really reliable. Now, we take it a step further even. When a person with MS in a clinical trial comes in to be evaluated, they see the treating physician, that's typically my role, where we talk about how they're doing and if they're doing good or bad and uh, discuss all of their symptoms and everything. There's a second clinician called a blinded evaluator. This person comes into the room and does not talk to the patient. They are unaware of what's going on day to day. They don't know about their symptoms or any of this kind of stuff. And they do a neurological examination blinded and they write down all the responses and they turn it in. And they're not allowed to know what's going on with the patient. Why? Because if the patient said, oh my gosh, my left leg, it's really numb, could influence the way that the examiner examines the patient. And it would, again, bias the trial. And so they do it without knowing anything. And it keeps the trial without bias in that regard. Lastly, when we obtain MRI scans, a special radiologist reads the scan. And if they reach certain concerning thresholds, they'll have to tell the treating physician. But otherwise, the patient and the doctor are blinded from the MRIs until the end of the trial. Now, keep in mind, the MRIs are reviewed very, very carefully, but during the course of the trial, barring that, we are both blinded, so we don't know what's on the MRI. Blinding is a very important tool to make sure that the results of the trial are not influenced by knowledge of what's going on. And it's really, really exciting at the end of the clinical trial, the day that we unblind. I sometimes uh, feel like it's kind of like Christmas where you finally get to find out what drugs people have been on and you get to talk to them about it and review all the results. And it's typically a really exciting time. Now, after the end of a blinded controlled trial like that, very commonly in the MS space, they then offer all the patients to continue on study drug, but in an open label fashion. So it's no longer blinded. The patient knows they're receiving the study drug. The doctor treating them knows they're taking the study drug. And that way, as we move forward in time, we can collect information, but it's different. It's no longer this blinded experiment. If you'd like to learn more about clinical trials and multiple sclerosis clinical research, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next video or the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.